Welcome to All Things Apostolic for July the 17th, Monday. And we are glad that you're with us here on this Monday. We're going to have a great time together. First of all, I would like to talk a little bit about the LGBTQT activists that marched through New York City Park on June the 23rd in advance of the annual Pride Parade. And they were chanting, we're here, we're queer, and we're coming for your children. We're here we're queer, and we're coming for your children. So I don't think they're kidding. Uh, there is an author, uh, Emmy O'Brien, who, uh, whose motto is Towards Trans-Communist Future, and it spells out that the collective liberation from parents and the nuclear family um, is what's important to bring about the kind of uh, downfall of capitalism and uh, the rise of a community, what they would call a community of care. So um, all of this is very interesting. I would say first, when you say we're coming for your children, in the context in which that is being said, uh, my first response would be that that's not very wise my second response is that you better be set to die on that hill because there's going to be tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people who will die on that hill in opposition to you having their children. So you might think about that while you're popping off. So anyway, the extreme transgenderism uh, ideology is not confined to the fringes of society. And uh, alarmingly, there are left-wing progressive politicians in some states that are becoming the enablers of trans extremists whose ultimate objective is to abolish the nuclear family altogether. Uh, now, this is talked about, uh, I mean, everywhere. Everywhere you look, you're finding people talking about it. What I'm giving you today uh, the data that I'm going to give you, which isn't a lot of data, we don't get into a lot of data usually, but um, is from a man named Joseph Klein. And um, there is an organization known as Parents Defending Education that has compiled a list of school districts by state that have transgender, gender, non-conforming policies that openly state that district personnel can or should keep students transgender status hidden from parents. Now that is in the original, that emphasis, hidden from parents. So this list includes, think about this, 1,002 school districts, 1,700 schools, 10,231,942 students nationwide. Guess what state is in the leadership of it? Of course, my beautiful, wonderful, pathetic home state of California, whose leadership in these areas is absolutely pathetic and comes vomiting out of the filthiness of Hollywood and other places. So California is in the lead as expected. Uh, now, it's not just a West Coast thing. It's also happening on the East Coast. New Jersey is kind of a leading state over there. And um, uh, so there is a questioning of the constitutional right of parents to uh, direct the education and upbringing of their children. This is a big challenge. You boys have bit off a big deal here on this. I would hate to be serious about confronting parents with their children um, in an issue like this. Because like I said, this is not only a hill to die on, this is a hill that a lot of other people would die on before it was over. And um, a bill that has been advancing here in California's legislature would require parents, and I think it passed the initial stages of whatever passed means, 
here the other day, would require parents to affirm their child's expressed gender identity in order to be judged fit by a court of law to provide for the health, safety, and welfare of the child, as though the court in the state knows more about the welfare of the child in the first place than does the parent. Where in the world did the court ever get such wisdom about raising children better than what healthy parents are raising them? Nonetheless, so the non-complying parents could be found liable for child abuse and be forced to give up custody of their child. This would be a very difficult thing for people to accept in any way, shape, or form uh, that are normal. I use the right word. Normal people do not do these kinds of things because normal means what the majority does. It's in the dictionary. You're not normal if you're outside of normal. You are abnormal. And if you're way out there, you are dis functional. These are things that everybody knows, but people who have given up their entire lives to fixate on a sexual pleasure, who have become deviant and have drifted deep into areas that exclude any concern about anything, even affirming the recognition of pedophiles as being a legitimate societal group that deserves their rights, forgetting altogether that rights all have restraints and that your rights end, someone said, where my nose begins. And so someone has to now not only fight for the right of the unborn, they have to fight for the right of children uh, not to be abused by dirty-minded, old, scabby-looking men. And some of them are not scabby-looking, but they are dirty-minded. So, uh, does this mean we hate people? No. But you have to confront that which needs to be confronted and say, this is not us, and this is not right. And um, as long as you stayed in your playpen, people have already given a lot of tolerance to this in America, but when you say, I'm coming after your children, uh, you're going to find that you crossed a line that would not be, that I would not want to be in your shoes. That's not a good thing to do. So, so what do we do about this? Well, we don't, we don't get guns and go to the streets and whatever, or attack people's houses or, uh, uh, physically try to destroy people, that's, that's not us. That's not our kingdom. That's not what we do. So what are we doing? Well, let me tell you one thing that we're doing in two days. This is the 17th on July, the 19th, the 20th, and the 21st. We are going together with a great group of young people people from across America in uh, celebration, in celebration of Jesus Christ, in celebration of what he's done in our lives, and also in very serious pursuit of becoming people that can make our world a better place. We will be coming together in a meeting called Peak. It is a meeting for young adults. There will probably be 5,000 or so in attendance and probably uh, that many more, maybe twice that many more. That will be attendance online. And so here you have these thousands of young people that will be coming together. They will be celebrating their manhood if they're men. And they'll be celebrating their womanhood if they're a woman. They'll be celebrating that there are people there that are marriageable, and they will have men finding women to marry and women finding men to marry. They are not carrying a big grudge on their shoulder, and they don't carry a flag because what they're doing is normal. 
and you do not have to press uh, against anything because this is what is normal. Since the beginning of mankind, this is what has been normal. This is what people do. God made a man, and God made a woman, and they had children. And that's the nuclear family that this, uh, that this book says that they've got to tear down to be able to abuse children and do what they want to as adults, so, uh, which is part of the ultimate agenda of all of this. This is not a black or white or brown or, or, or red or yellow thing in terms of skin color. Uh, this is much more insidious than those things. This is insidious because it goes to the foundation of man. And so now they're talking about destroying the nuclear family, but now we've passed that. We're talking about we're coming to get your children. So it's down to what are we going to do with the individual? But now we've passed that. We have went to the gender of a child and, and the, uh, the folly of thinking that you can actually change a person's gender or that they can change their gender by simply saying, as of today, I am a furry animal. And then they become a furry animal. Uh, we know that's not true, but we are supposed to think that. Or I am, if I'm a man and I say, I am a woman from then on that I am a woman. Well, you're not. And uh, people that, that actually have surgeries to try to follow the pursuit of this, this dream um, that's in their mind, uh, they concede that this is true. It's the progenitors, the political faction that tries to say, no, you can't say that, that that's true. And, um, and the uh, preposterous idea that uh, a man gets pregnant and has a baby. Uh, which has never happened in the history of the human race, but oh yes, oh yes, this could happen. Is they they won't they won't say it couldn't happen, and so, uh, but you can't do that without a womb, and you can't. And on it goes. So, all of this is uh, uh, facing a world that's crazy, uh, but we face it with joy, knowing that in the midst of that there is something more powerful, and so we will be going to this meeting, and there will be thousands and thousands of young people who will be celebrating together. They'll have the whole hotel to themselves till three or four o'clock in the morning. They'll, they'll be having a great time. They will, it will not be an immoral time. It will be a time of, of pure and wholesome and powerful and strong fellowship uh, of people coming together and uh, that are balanced and, and whole. Um, and uh, trying to become more whole, W-H-O-L-E. Amen. And so, anyway, all of that is going to take place. Uh, by the way, for any of you apostolics that are listening today, when you get to this meeting, go to the hotel to the Wilson U. booth, and when you get to the Wilson U. booth, this is what we are doing about these things in America, okay? You will find the book, Jesus, My Master. I have a master, and all of us who live for God have a master in our lives. People out here in the world, they refuse any master. They're like a wild ass running on the hillside. It's a biblical analogy. And um, uh, that are not shod and don't know how to take a bit in their mouth, and don't know how to take a saddle, don't know how to become useful and of, uh, and of value. So uh, that is mean they're bad, it means they don't know and they need to know and they have to be restrained from doing things that destroy others until they know. So all of this is part of the balance of what goes on uh, in our society today. So you want to get the book. Also, uh, also there's been a number of people that wanted the, uh, the song uh, about Inside Bling Bling. Uh, the actual name of the song is I'm a Cosmic Kid. I'm a Cosmic Kid. All of this ties into what we've been talking about here. All of this is taking all those things into consideration. So uh, uh, by, the, by this time next week, you will be able to, um, you'll be able to purchase uh, an MP3 online. I'm a Cosmic Kid. It's coming. Be ready to get it. Make it a part of your, your, your repertoire of music. So, and a lot of other great things are going to be. There's going to be Cosmic Kid merch there, and there's going to be many, many other things beyond that. And so um, 
I just want to make you aware of that. What a great time we're going to have. And um, if you're looking for help, come and be with us. We want to help you. And there is help.